The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. There was a particular fellow who used to travel a lot to the United States on behalf of the entity that he worked for. He had some medical issues and it was very hard for him to travel regular class. He, could, he had problems and issues in circulation and he usually would travel business class. He needed the room. It wasn't even luxury. It was a necessity. Anyways, to make a long story short, his son's bar mitzvah was coming up and as a prerequisite to the bar mitzvah, there was a hanachas tefillin where his son in Israel was going to put on tefillin. He's a chassidish fellow. And the way it works, Bank says chassidish is you go to the rabbi and the rabbi puts tefillin on your son for the first time. But it's a large chassidus. And you have to book many months in advance the date to make sure the Rebbe is available to put the phone on yourself. The fellow needs to travel for work to the United States. He travels to the United States and he needs to come back to Eretz Yisrael, to Israel, in the morning so that that morning he could travel directly to his house, pick up his son. He'll have plenty of time. There's a big buffer of time. Take his son to the Rebbe and his son will be able to put on the phone for the first time. And sure enough, he books a flight back the night before with plenty of leeway, plenty of room to make it. The problem is he leaves to the airport and he gives himself again multiple hours so that he could arrive and check in his stuff. And he had a ticket booked, a business class ticket book, and he was going to go back so he could be there for his son's son. He comes to the, he's on his way to the airport when all of a sudden there's a terrible, terrible accident and the road is shut. And it's getting later and later and he keeps looking at his watch, he keeps looking at his watch. He's going to be really late. <coughs> He makes it to the airport. He runs over to the LL counter. It's an hour before departure, and there isn't even anyone by the check-in counter. No one's there. He picks up his phone. He tells his wife, I'm so sorry. Please tell our tzaddik that I'm not going to make it back. The next flight is not until tomorrow, and there isn't even anyone here to talk to. And his wife says, I can't tell it to him. He's so excited about putting on the phone and going to the Rebbe with his father. It's going to break him. So what, what, what am I supposed to do? There was an accident. I had plenty of time. And there's no one here at the LL counter. I can't check in. What, what am I supposed to do? And his wife says to him, you still have one thing. You have one arrow left in your quiver. And that arrow is tefillah. I'm going to tell the kids here that we have an issue and we have to daven for Tati. We have to daven for Daddy. He needs to make this flight because he has to be back for the Nachas tefillin. And you daven. And between the, the family here in Erdes Ron, you and Chutzlar, something will happen. He goes, what? What's going to happen? She says, let's try so at home they go and they're just throwing the daven, and he davens. And he's standing here. He's just not even sure what he's going to do. Where's he staying for the night? And he's so disappointed. But listen, what can you do? So he picks up the phone and he calls El Al in Israel to rebook his flight. He knows they're still open. It's late in America. But it's, they said the next flight's not until tomorrow. And the, um, the, the agent on the phone says to him, um, where are you calling from? He says, I'm actually calling from the El Al check-in counter, but there's nobody here. And the flight is didn't leave yet. It's, it's an hour before the flight. And I got to get back. And he decides to pour out his heart. And he says, I'm going to tell you where I have to get back. My son's bar mitzvah and I have to go to the Rebbe. And he's so disappointed. I don't even know what to do. And she goes, Adoni, chake daka. Wait a second. And a minute later, she gets back on the phone. She goes, I have the agents upstairs that are putting people on the flight. And I told them about your predicament. They said, they'll see what they could do. Don't go anywhere. Wait. He waits five or ten minutes. And all of a sudden, an agent comes running with a, someone from security and says, come, I think we can get you on the flight. They run him through security, they bring him upstairs, and they said, listen, the flight was overbooked, so therefore we closed the gate, we closed the check-in a little bit early. But it happens to be that one passenger didn't show up, and you can have that seat. And that seat is in business class. We hope you're okay with it. And the fellow gets his business class seat, which anyways was really how he needed the flight, on the flight that he wanted to take. And the next morning he made it home, and his son had a Hanukkah to film by the Rebbe with his father and they lived happily ever after. But that's not the moral of the story. The moral of the story is sometimes in life we're like, what are we supposed to do? And we give up. What do you mean? You still have one arrow left in your quiver. What's that? To believe with your whole heart that to feel the most amazing things could happen. And then all the gates could be opened. And that which seems unrealistic can become reality. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.